welcome everybody to the September meeting of the Health and Education Committee. Our first order of business is the approval of the minutes. Madam, <laughs> Madam Chairman, I move that we approve the minutes as presented. Very good. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right. Health Department report. Ms. Garrett. How you doing? Uh, Chairman, might, uh, might I just uh, make an, an introduction while uh, uh, making our way up? I'd like to introduce, for those who don't know, uh, Ms. Lakeview. Uh, Rachel is, this is starting her second week, and so she's uh, got her training wheels on tonight and, <laughs> and working with Becky. She's going to show, so in the future, Becky's going to take her through every committee for the first series, and then so Rachel will be working for you all. Um, at each one of the committee meetings and taking minutes uh, from this point forward. Excellent. Welcome. Thank you. We're trying not to go past midnight. <laughs> 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 Last night it went forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been up here to one o'clock. Oh my goodness. That's all right. <laughs> that will not be the case tonight. <laughs> not because of me. That'll be a job. Thank you for that. Oh, did you want to introduce oh, Ashley? Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. I did. I introduced both of them last night. I forgot Ashley was behind me. So yesterday was Ashley's first day, Ashley McDonald. Uh, she uh, uh, comes to us from the Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue. She'd been there as the PO. Uh, we gave her a, a few weeks off. Uh, she was in Emmitsburg, uh, Maryland this past week going to school and working on her master's as, and became the first master's PIO in the state of Tennessee. Uh, so we're glad to her, have her on board. And she was also, just last month, uh, and at the national convention, she came in as the new national president of the PIO Association. So we're very, very glad to have her. She'll be working with all of us and being the one voice for Rutherford County and uh, when she's not working with our uh, first responders uh, and we don't have emergencies, then she's going to be working on recycling and getting the changing the dynamics and changing the pendulum of how we think about our waste stream. So uh, she, she's going to be become very versed in that. She'll be talking trash, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well versed in that already. <laughs> <laughs> We're <the> fire department. <laughs> Uh, please make Ashley welcome. Oh, welcome. Good to meet you. Yeah. Thanks for being here tonight. All right, Ms. Garrett. Oh, good evening. I bring to you my uh, report for August <clears throat> from the health department. And we're moving right along appointments. And uh, patient encounters have continued to go up after we implemented our electronic record. You know, we saw that dip, so the overall year numbers will be a little bit lower, but we expected that for about three months. We had uh, a big disruption in uh, appointments and that, learning the new system and implementing it into um, our daily processes. We just went through our first back to school year after the electronic records and uh, we survived, so that's good. Uh, as you can, you'll hear from schools after me, there's quite a few new kids that have come into the county and all of them needed vaccinations and immunization records and physicals and and that kind of thing for school <clears throat> birth certificates. So we were kind of one-stop shop for all the new people coming to town for their kids to get that done. Um, so we did see quite a bit of a, an increase in, in overall in our numbers for, for those kinds of services that we offered. Um, and it was challenging with our new system, but we survived. Now, if we get through back to school and the first big thing after that, flu. So flu vaccine is in and it's available uh, at both our sites. It's walk-in, you don't need an appointment. Um, eight to 10 and one to three are the best hours um, as we have you know more staff available to get to you quicker for walk-in appointments. Um, but pretty much we'll do them all day. Um, eight to 4.30 is when we're there. So um, if you're needing a flu shot, you can come to either of the sites. It is $30 full cost, but we do file insurance and Medicare, and we also slide to family income. So people come in and tell us their family size and their income, and then we're able to adjust the, the uh, 
price of the vaccine accordingly. Your WIC numbers are down at both locations. Yes, yeah, so WIC across the state has been down uh, quite a bit. There's been a couple of things that have happened that we switched to a new system where we didn't have the paper checks anymore, mm -hmm. what we call vouchers. Now we now have the debit cards, mm -hmm. which are so much better for the clients and we're figuring it out. It's easier on our end and it's just really been a great transition. But during that transition, there was a little bit of lag that happened disruption. across the state disruption that happened there. And then they really don't know. It just seems as the economy is better, the WIC numbers kind of tend to fluctuate. And so right now, job rates are, are high and all that. So we're just seeing that it dips like that occasionally. So. I also noticed on your um, immunizations. Yes. In the, um, Smyrna, your numbers are way up August over August. Yes, way up. So we tried something new there. A couple of things happened. <clears throat> We have been working with the school nurses in Smyrna and uh, helping, them the, helping them figure out how to get the kids directly over to us faster. Mm -hmm. We did some different type of appointment slots in Smyrna. We did like bulk appointments at, you know, eight and 10. And so anyways, we tried some new things and it was very successful. Well, and, right, and it really helped us um, be able to meet the demand because of all those new kids coming, there are a lot of them in the north end of our county that were needing that service. So, and we cut back on things, <coughs> other appointments, so that we could handle kind of those, because um, that was definitely we knew was going to be a demand. And um, we didn't try the bulk appointments in Murfreesboro, and I don't think it was as successful as what we tried in Smyrna. So we've kind of met and said that's how we'll do it next year, because it was more easier for people to get in in Smyrna than it was in our Murfreesboro. So. Um, for some of this group, I don't know. Um, it seems like we, I know we talked about it in budget, and I don't. I just don't remember if it came through health and then first or not, because it was one of those kind of a glitch things where the state puts some new responsibilities on you in terms of um, monitoring the requirements and so, and so we ended up approving a position for you temporarily uh, to bring back a retired nurse supervisor until you got the position filled. So right. where, where are you at on filling that position? Yes, so we did interviews today and we had some really great candidates. So um, hopefully we're gonna choose one of those and she'll hopefully accept and um, then we can get her on board. Usually with the state, it takes about a month to get a start date, <coughs> which is kind of frustrating, but it'll probably be about a month from when she accepts that she would be able to start. So, yeah, so that's moving right along for the other nursing supervisor has come back. She's already worked a <clears throat> couple of days for us and helped us out. So, uh, yeah, that was very helpful. And I did get to bring it. You just weren't here that night, but I did bring it to you guys, and I appreciate it so much, your support, because um, it's really making a difference from us you know, drowning in those communicable disease requirements and um, being able to make it during this uh, patch of time. Okay. So, thank you. Anybody have questions for Ms. Garrett? I mean, you want to, I know it's not your department, but you may want to mention the upcoming open enrollment for all of our employees. Yes, yes. It's clinic. October 18th. It's going to be a new process this year that yes. Mr. Elam and his department's putting on, but you all will be participating. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so we're excited to be a part of that. We do that every year with the Employee Wellness Fair, um, and every year they get a little better and offer better things and, and uh, cool opportunities. And so this year they've got um, the open enrollment where the employees can go and actually get a person to help them. And I know my staff is very excited about having that ability. You know, I, I have uh, insurance and with my husband, and we sit down over this computer, and we're trying to figure out major life decisions. Mm -hmm. It's kind of stressful, and you're like, what if I do it wrong? What if I hit the wrong button? So it's really nice that the county's having that available for them. It's going to be Lane Agra. Yeah, Lane Agra, October 18th, 3, uh, three to 7. 3 to 7, so all of our employees can go out there. They're going to have a mammogram bus and... and different uh, 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 vendors will be there, yes. uh, all kind of free stuff, so yeah. come out and have health, health fair. And health education topics and things like that. They're going to be doing uh, um, flu shots as yes, well. Yes, flu shots as well. So you can get all done, get your points. Yep. <laughs> yeah, employees can save on their insurance if they get all their wellness points.
And then talk just briefly about the um, poverty simulation and the ESL. Yeah, so we do a um, partnership with the adult um, reading council and they have brought in special teachers to do adult ESL or English as a second language classes in our Smyrna site twice a week they're in there and it's just so popular we had no idea um, <clears throat> so we planned it to also be on Wednesday when we have the farmers market in our Smyrna site so Wednesdays is crazy up there <laughs> it's hard to find parking and but that's a good kind of crazy because all the rooms are getting used all our education remember when we all toured it yeah. and there were all those great education community education rooms so they're all getting used for the English as a second language um, class um, and that's really just a partnership with our health education are in there and they're also trying to share health messages as they're learning they're using that as their basis of learning English and so that's kind of the partnership we have there the poverty simulations we do those in um, partnership with many different agencies we do them at schools we do them at um, community centers and basically it's kind of like the game life and you walk up and you get a card and it kind of tells you your scenario in life mm -hmm. and what you have to do. You have no car, you have to get to the food stamp you know, place and you have to get to the health department and you have to go here and you don't have a car and the bus isn't running today and you know, how are you going to get there? So it's kind of that kind of uh, simulation to let people, and we've had kids go through it, we have adults go through it, we have teachers go through that. <clears throat> as a way just to remember all the challenges sometimes people will bring when they're coming to see you dealing with the public and things that we do. Um, so, I, and all of my staff have been through it and then of course they lead and participate in it as well. Fantastic. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Garrett? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Move to accept the report, Madam Chairman. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. Do you have anything else for us? No, that's it. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate your support. Thank you. All right. Next, we're going to talk about community care. <clears throat> Mr. Butter, why don't you go ahead and come on up because we're going to talk to you next anyway. Um, okay. Uh, Ms. Carol Holland told you to um, give us the report. <laughs> <laughs> Doug is on our mm -hmm. community care board. And I thought, who better? Since I was couldn't be here last, last month mm -hmm. or this month. And just any highlights, just anything specific you want to share with us? We, we have the report on our iPad, so just, we know a little bit about what's going on over there. Just if there's anything you want to highlight. Just just the highlights and um, that they had a, you know, they were in the black last last month, the financials. Okay. Um, the one one initiative that, that the board and the administrator is doing, of course, is you know, they, they're just like any other health health care center. They're short staffed with nurses sometimes and they struggle to recruit, retain good qualified nursing staff. Um, in the budget, we um, the the mayor who's of course the chairman, he recommended a two and a half percent. It's like just like um, the other employees receive in the county and we also addressed um, the staffing it's harder to staff on nights and weekends <coughs> so we increased the uh, shift differentials for those nights and weekends and that according to the administrator that's helped some with with attracting people onto those shifts Excellent. so that's in a nutshell is basically awesome. what they had at the last meeting the mayor i know you were involved with the christy houston funding that's going to be coming to that facility that's correct and, and for those on property management uh, Thursday night, property management will give an update on that. Um, we did have some issues on the roof, and Ben Matkin has been able to get up on the roof and find out we've got about uh, three to five years left on the existing warranty on that roof. It's It's been built on, and there's different levels. He says it's really just a, a mess up there, but at least the area that is in question has a little bit of warranty, so we're working with uh, one of the roofing companies to do that. The um, uh, We have until about December, we need to take some action, so we've turned that over to the um, uh, PBA, Public Building Authority has taken and Mr. Picklesheimer and his, his committee are moving forward. They'll be um, interviewing contractors and uh, moving forward. We ran into a little glitch in that 
we thought it was just a simple renovation with paint and et cetera, carpet uh, for the old section that we got the Christie Houston grant to help and we have to match it. Uh, <clears throat> we'll probably be going to budget to um, borrow from the county instead of going to the bank. I think we can borrow it cheaper from the county and pay it like the Christie Houston pays uh, a third, a third, a third of the $650,000 that we got the grant for. Uh, so we'll do the same thing with the county. And uh, so that match will be paid a third, a third, a third. That way it doesn't deplete. Doug's our finance chair on the committee. Uh, and won't deplete our rainy day fund, which I just want to make sure that we're, we're solvent and uh, good to go. But we'll hopefully start the construction on that uh, uh, by the first of the year. Renovation. We, the county, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, own the building. That's correct. We own the building. So we do have some responsibility keeping the building up. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And Ben Mack is going to be, you know, back in the budget, we, we he's got Rob trained now, so Rob can kind of come in and take some of the weight off of what Ben was doing. So we're kind of shifting. Uh, being over and let him be the eyes and ears for the county and the PBA, kind of like um, Jerry was for um, uh, on the old judicial, I mean the new judicial building. Mm -hmm. Jerry Preston was uh, kind of that person, so Ben's going to be replacing Jerry, working with the PBA and making sure that the contractors are pushing them because we have several um, projects we're starting. We've got uh, John Lowell's. Uh, archives are getting ready to start. We've got the completion of this renovation, this room, and et cetera. And the outside of the, the courthouse, we've got uh, uh, the old judicial building. We're getting ready to start on that as well. So Ben will be uh, working in, in all of those areas. Um, it's been several years since this committee toured that facility, and um, Commissioner Phillips made an excellent suggestion that perhaps we go back and um, conduct one of our meetings over there, and I think that would be a really worthwhile thing for us to do. Would that um, be, uh, I'm Chairman, would that be an evening meeting? It, it would just take place at this meeting, just like we did at the Health Department, okay. just the same meeting, same time. We would just okay. announce our location would be there instead well, of here. you want to eat? Uh, yeah, probably I'll just touch base with the administrator, sure. maybe, and just see what they want to do. Cause, you know, before when we've done that, I, I don't remember there being refreshments or anything, but there, you know. Refreshments. I'm, I'm yeah. always happy to be refreshed. I've got, <laughs> got a great shift out there. That's a great, good yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. If I could interject, this is, yeah. of course, a new committee. And last month, the old committee talked about this, and uh, our, our December meeting is usually during Christmas week. Mm -hmm. And the discussion was to move that meeting back a week, maybe on like the Wednesday mm -hmm. before, and okay. so that we could take advantage of the decorations and and sure. uh, th those type of things. So, if, um, yeah, they have a tree competition. Yeah, it, it was it was real. Yeah, I've never seen the tree competition. I've only they heard about it. The, they bid those trees off too. Yes, you can bid on. What, what is the auction? We need to go before they. We need to go before they sell the trees. It's around the first, first the, the December, two, I'm not The sure. Wednesday before is the 18th, but the actual Wednesday before that is the 11th, and that might be the time to go. Okay. Let me, um, if you all don't mind, let me just check with the administrator. We've got time between now and December to find out when that is. But yeah, I mean, and you know, we don't have to do it before they sell the trees, but I would look, I've heard about the trees for years and I would love to see the families and whatnot come in and decorate them and then they end up auctioning them off as a fundraiser for them, correct? Some of our businesses that come in and okay. put them up too. Yeah. I've heard, they're beautiful. I've heard they're really impressive, yeah. They have a sheet of paper out there and you can see what the last bid is. Okay. The, the so. residents out there are real proud of those things yes. too. Yes. Yes. It'd be a good time for us to not only see yeah. what the building process is all about at that time, but also in, enjoy uh, not only the residents but the, uh, the facility as a whole. It's, it's the right time of year to be there. It is. Um, one of my first real jobs, one of my first grown up jobs, was actually at a nursing home in the business office. And I, um, where our office was, the residents 
came around a lot, and so you'd get interrupted in your day visiting, you know, with them. But I made some really sweet friends, and especially at Christmas, this is the ones that don't have families and so folks to come visit, they would really appreciate a Christmas visit. I think that'd be a perfect time for us to go out there. So we'll absolutely see if we can't make that happen. Thank you for that suggestion. That's awesome. All right, I will entertain a motion to approve the community care report. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, you sit tight for a second. Ms. Jolly, we're going to go ahead and bring you up here for special projects. Um, Ms. Jolly sends this out ahead of time, so we've all had a chance to look at it. Um, basically, this report just gives us an update um, on where we're at in terms of percentage of construction complete, um, dollars spent, dollars that are obligated and those that are not obligated. So were there any significant changes that you've made on here since we have seen it last? I made the changes that were approved by the commission, um, reducing Oakland Middle's budget and transferring that money to Siegel High, Laverne Middle, <coughs> and the elementary land. Okay. So I've done that this time. You've done that this past mm -hmm. month? Okay. And this report is generally static, except for those kinds of things mm -hmm. in general bill paying, so mm -hmm. that's... That's good information. Okay. Do you have any questions on this report for Ms. Jolly? If not, I will entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve this report. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right, school board report. Bye. He sent the rookie over here all by himself. <laughs> He's free to the wolves. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we'll take it easy on you. Oh, fine. Yeah. Um, we don't have any um, financial requests uh, this month, any financial amendments from, uh, budget amendments from school board, but I did still ask for a representative to be here because it's always good for us just to continue to build this relationship and take opportunities to talk about things that maybe a lot of times we don't get to talk about. So I don't know if you've got some prepared comments and anything you, you want to share or you're just open to questions. Well, Mr. Spurlock, he, he apologizes, and of course that we're having our strategic yeah. uh, planning with the school board, you know, looking at a revamp, you know, strategic three-year plan and updating that. And that's where Ms. Spurlock and um, Trey are at tonight. And you said they and let you go first. So they let me go first, yeah. you know, to talk about the money. Yes. And then, then um, they, um, and then of course to come up here. He, he wanted to make, so let, he told me to make sure to talk to y'all about um, basically our growth that we've had experienced already this year. Already this year, we've had over a thousand new students okay. in Rutherford County School System. And interesting, now 50%, over 50% of that growth is in the middle schools. Okay. Um, and Did he give you an exact number since that was like 1,083 or 1,100 was the last number I heard? Exactly. He said over 1,000. Okay. Now, I can get you the, I'll get you the exact numbers yeah. if you'd like. Would you like me to get that? I, I just always like to know how close we are to, you know, 1,100. Is, is it creeping up? You know, that's what I'm listening for. Yes, Total so. student population, you don't happen to have that, do you? It was over 47,000, but I'm, once again, it, it changes with, right. sure. I just said when we were at the regional community commissioner meeting, mm -hmm. um, Williamson County made the comment that they're up 1,500 students. So wow. I was just curious where we were in comparison to that. And he had a good report on WGNS yesterday too. Mm -hmm. Real good report. Was that with Mr. Lee? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We they don't let me listen to the radio. <laughs> <laughs> you have radio your own. <laughs> too busy, but um. He did point out to mention that in, in, at Rockwell Middle School, as an example, they had over 200 new students so far this year uh -huh. at Rockwell Middle, which is, of course is over capacity right now. Uh -huh. um, they're searching for land in um, in the western part of the county. Like, you know, we're still doing that. As I said, we the, keep hearing we're getting close. Are we getting close, or do oh, you have I, any idea? Um, hope hopefully they'll have something, but I'm sure they'll they're they're looking so. Laverne Middle uh, has, has grown quite a bit. Uh, is it this year or was it last year? Because they're, they're quite a bit over capacity as well, I thought. He had a list of by, by the, where we're at currently by school, and I don't have that with me, not, but I can, I can provide you would, with that. Would you ask him just to send it? It's what he provided to us back in the spring and so on. He could just email that to all the uh, uh, committee members. It's very uh, detailed and very informative. 
like I said, I just brought the portables. I think it was a little burn middle they just this year. Oh, have they added that? Well, we're talking about Rockville. Like, it, to me, it's it's kind of funny. One of the teachers at the middle school, in fact, the three, three portables there, the three history teachers went out to the middle school and, and uh, Mr. Barlow didn't have to select teachers. Mm -hmm. So the builder, the platform to go into the classrooms, they needed steps at the end. So somebody in the school system come out and said, well, you can't, told this teacher, you can't build those steps that you're building. Why? You're not certified. He took his own money, took his own time, and he used the steps from another school, uh, another portable. Then they come back and said, well, you can go ahead and do it. And I thought, why do you say when they were inspected, you're not certified? Free help. It's like giving you free money. I think, Commissioner, what we asked the school board here a couple of years ago because of potential pro or problems that were created by people Peace mailing. doing what they thought were good deeds. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole Laverne High School uh, d issue down there is because someone thought they were good, doing a good deed and created a, a, a potential That's safety different. issue. And so we asked that everything, a couple of years ago, we as a commission asked that everything go through engineering prior to doing this and get approval from engineering so that we don't have those poten pot potential issues in the future. So I, 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 can, I can understand what you're saying, but this was a little bit different. They had come out there, they didn't tell him why. Portables Go don't ahead. do you much good if you can't get into them, right? But do what? I said the portables don't do you much good if you can't get into them, right? That's true. <laughs> and you know, we have a lot of parents. We have a lot of people who do volunteer work. Mm -hmm. And they do grade A volunteer work. But when you have somebody come in and say you can't do it, mm -hmm. and don't tell you why you can't do it, and I won't tell you. I walked up those steps and they was bad for when, after they were stopped. Mm -hmm. But then they come back and said, yes, you can do it. So, but the inspector had been out there and said everything was doing fine. It's different when you don't have someone checking on it. Yeah. This is what was happening. They, they were being checked on. Well, I'm proud of the work they did out there. I, I really am. Um, the other thing I have is, um, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll bring it, um, to this committee next next month is we the, the school board was updating just some routine policies you know that the TSBA recommends and um, one of them was a credit card policy which we don't have a credit card you know at the central office currently <clears throat> once that that school board policy was updated I got to research and of course that would require commission action you know with a resolution to authorize that so I'm, I, we do not have a card right now but I will bring that resolution and and put together a, a policy for the use of the card which is it's just basically for um, you know just small small items equipment and material um, more and more speaking of technology staff especially it seems a lot of the technology companies, they don't want to take a purchase order or even sure. a paper check. Right. And I'm, I'm sure your office experiences the same with, with purchase kind of credit order. card. It's just um, they, um, some of the technology equipment companies, they they want a credit card, you know, to uh, the, the customer to use a credit card instead of use a, a county purchase order or a paper check. Just e-commerce. They're trying to get e-commerce. Yes. So. We have one that we actually use. I just canceled county, uh, county general wide the Sam's card that we had. And everybody had a Sam's card, and Sam's went up on their cards. They went from fifteen dollars a card to forty dollars per person per card. And like Chief Farley wanted five new cards, he had three, and he wanted two more for five. And 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 then I started the deeper I checked into it, it was not just the fifteen going to the forty. But it was also 
they increased their annual membership for the for the uh, what is it uh, card that I've got personally is where you can go in early business mm -hmm. uh, corporate mm -hmm. or whatever you go mm -hmm. in before the doors open business, you go in the business card, business card. Um, <clears throat> the difference was after I, I started doing some research on it our card is a government card which is tax free so that would allow say Chief Farley if he wanted to go out there he would use the county card to get in even though he used his own MasterCard or Visa card to buy something it was still tax free mm -hmm. so he could go for Christmas and buy him a new 80 inch TV at Sam's using our tax free card to get in even though he purchased it mm -hmm. that was not what it was intended for mm -hmm. so I've canceled all the Sam's cards now we'll wait till Costco comes in and see what they have to offer but, <laughs> you know, but it's not right for a person to use our county card to get tax free mm -hmm. right. they need to be paying taxes as well Okay. I'll bring you that. Yeah, just along with some budget amendments. Make sure you got controls on those credits. Oh, I'll I'll be bringing that too. The, the policy on that, yes, sir. And that's that's all I have right now. Madam Chairman, I uh, went to the uh, town hall at uh, Rock Springs mm -hmm. uh, Middle last night. Uh, I believe uh, the director has four planned for the for the school year in different parts of the county. And uh, uh, the auditorium was uh, was quite full, and each department head uh, gave us a short uh, talk about uh, their, uh, their, their goals and uh, opportunities to reach out and touch them for questions. And I just thought it was a very informative opportunity for parents to get to see the administrators, which there was several several there and uh, and quite a number of faculty <coughs> members and it was just a, I just thought it was a, a great uh, uh, opportunity to get to know your educators last sure. night so and they're happening all over the county over the, uh, over the entire school year so if you have a chance to go I think you'd find it very uh, informative Fantastic. I can get I can get the dates if you'd like on the next three of them. If you could, yeah, uh, maybe email mm -hmm. uh, the committee or the chairman. Yeah, or even just check with James Evans. He's usually pretty good about trying to keep us in the loop on those sort of things. So just make sure James knows, that keep us current on all those. We, we had those last year, and they, mm -hmm. as you said, Commissioner, they was very informative, very well attended, yes. and, and I think did a lot as far as some of the issues that were going around at the time. And they, they gave the uh, parents opportunities to, uh, to ask questions of the uh, of the administrators and the central office staff. And I thought that was uh, I thought that was a, a great opportunity for communications, and give and take. I mean, so seventy five percent of our county budget is spent on education, <laughs> that's and that's right. really um, I think that bodes well for Mr. Spurlock that he sees that as a priority to stay in communication, um, you know, with the, the citizens. So. It's fantastic. I was not able to go last night, but I, I have attended them before. And in part, I, I thought that they were attended well because we were talking about rezoning last year. <laughs> last year so yes, I'm glad to hear that it was well attended last night as well. Yes, okay. They used to do that and talk about the prospect subdivisions that was coming in and how many was coming in to a subdivision. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> we won't talk about how many years ago. <laughs> Madam Chairman, I'd like to, if we could, last month we there was some conversation about the crossing guards. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of like to know uh, how we're doing on that. So I, I understand they're having difficulty. I had heard I, that too at the beginning of the year, getting yeah. the recruiting. Yeah. And our safety out there, I, I'll get, I'm not getting calls, but I'll see stuff on social media and things like that, little things mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd like to know where we're, how we're doing next meeting, maybe where we're at or how it's okay. going with crossing guards. That's probably a topic for, I mean, that's under the Sheriff's Department, so the topic for public safety, I'd be happy to, I know a couple of us that's are on public safety, you're always welcome uh, to come to public safety and, and we can uh, discuss that. Has it been a conversation on public safety at all? Do what? Has this come up at public safety at all? Have y'all, is it anything y'all discussed yet? Well, there was some discussion, I think, last month at public safety, but not this month at public safety. 
There was nothing brought up as far as any particular issues. I mean, it's going to be a constant issue. They did, uh, I think, raise the pay rate, if I remember right, uh, and hopefully that's helped. But, but yeah, I invite you to public I safety. Agree, yeah. Okay. I want to say when the when I saw the story right at the beginning of the school year, the news I think was reporting they were 15 short at that point. So I don't know, and that was before pay raise or anything else. But that was that's a big number to be short. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a tough position to fill. It is. That was what the discussion was. Was it's it's a real tough position to fill. Yeah. Yeah. You're there for an hour mm -hmm. in the morning, All an hour in the work. evening, and. Mm -hmm. The rest of your day, you're probably waiting to come back to work for your other hour in the afternoon. It's, it's very specific appeal to someone. Yeah. Mayor, you had some issues. Yeah. Uh, one thing, since Mr. Bodery's here, that's what I it dawned on me. I told you at the beginning, we need to talk to you, boy. Now it's come out. I did get a call early this morning from a a um, crossing guard at what's the school out of Water Hill, going to Jefferson Pike. Uh, uh, Wilson Elementary. Wilson. Okay, so this guy is a retired um, uh, employee from Kroger uh, in management, but he just needs something to do, so he, he went to work for the Sheriff's Department. He works on the far end, so where he says at Wilson Elementary, the parents are not allowed to pull into the front um, of the entrance to let kids off. They have to come all the way down to the left-hand side and go down uh, the road was uh, only two stop signs there. There's not a four-way stop. Mm -hmm. So as uh, students are coming from Smyrna, coming east on Jefferson Pike, they're having to try to turn, and he's down here getting the cars to come in, but out on Jefferson Pike, there's not a crossing guard. So those parents are trying to turn left, and I say this because you're chairman of the road board this year also. And he reached out to your superintendent last week, and he told him there wasn't anything he could do. But he's concerned about the safety of, of the parents and kids turning left, mm -hmm. coming to Jefferson Pike. So if I want to get TDOT maybe to do a safety study yes. uh, on that area, if it warrants a four-way stop as opposed to a two-way stop. Because it is a state highway. It is a state highway. That's they actually this. Uh, this last meeting, it was they're having quite a bit, quite a bit of accidents and wrecks down on 231, mm -hmm. south of Murfreesboro. And as as that corridor, and I'm saying I'm sure it's the same way over there. Is as that corridor is just more and more residential growth is building out mm -hmm. there. Those roads were never, you know, there's not, mm -hmm. there's not these shoulders that right. people can merge on, and then there's more right. and more wrecks they, at the intersection. Even those, uh, they pass the first crossing guard, and as they pass that, these. There's not a passing uh, a crossing guard there, but they have to turn left, and only a two-way stop going this way and this way. So they're speeding up as they're trying to get on to Smyrna or wherever they're going, going west. Mm -hmm. So these people are trying to whip it in there real quick, right. you know, by turning left, and they're just <coughs> concerned for for the safety. So. High volume. Yes, sir. They Admin. don't have schools on. Well, yeah, but. Kind of, it's kind of. There's not a crossing guard there, so they're letting her going. Mm -hmm. I'm back up to 25 miles an hour. <laughs> Schools are faster compliance. Yeah, yeah. correct. I'll speak to so, Mr. Lee to see if there's anything. Yes, sir. In, you know, on our property, we can do, and otherwise, it's T dot. Sure. Yeah, and a lot of times the internal circulation has to do separating car riders from buses. So if there's, a, if they're only letting them go into a certain area, it's probably trying to contain. Right. That I'm sure that's what they do with yeah. buses going into the front right. and then forcing all the pedestrian cars to come down right. to the side entrance. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you can check on that, yes, that's what you get for wearing two hats. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions for this one particular point? Last night at um, the public safety committee meeting, our Dan Good, our OSHA manager who works for risk management. Uh, was making his report and th there's a spike every year every year when uh, in August when schools come back in session and uh, uh, there were if I'm not mistaken 22 uh, recordable accidents uh, within the school system in August 
and, and the questions related to to him was, uh, where are those accidents investigated, and how are what's the end, the, the what's the outcome of that accident investigation? He didn't know, the sheriff didn't know, and what we would like for Mr. Spurlock or the school board to report back to this committee, maybe even next month, mm -hmm. is what happens when a person has an accident or some type of work-related accident. Do we do an investigation, and what's the end result of that investigation? Uh, so so we'd, we'd like to know what happens. The, the school board has 75% of our budget, but they also have about 75% of the accidents. The accidents. <laughs> uh, and, and every accident that we can pre prevent goes 100% to the bottom line of this county. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's in our best interest if we can figure out the root cause to some of those accidents and reduce them or, or eliminate some of them from happening again. And that's our question. Are we investigating those accidents? And when we find whether it's an unsafe act or an unsafe condition, what are we doing about it to try to make sure that it doesn't happen again? So we would like that information from the school board. When you have an accident, is it investigated? Who's involved in the investigation? And if it's something that uh, uh, is physical in nature, are the SROs involved in that uh, accident investigation, those kinds of things. So if you could ask. I'll let uh, him know, sir, no. uh, and, and report back to this committee yeah. the, what they do when you have an accident. Uh, are, are we in doing the investigation and, and what's the outcome of those investigations? Can you made me just think when you were talking about that. Um, I wonder if that's a conversation that we need to have at entrance committee meeting. Is that something that risk management would investigate? Um, and are we having one this month? Kind of, we have certain gaps months where we don't have one. Are we having one Thursday? I just approved the uh, uh, agenda today. Okay, so that it will be this Thursday? Yes. Yeah, we should definitely bring that up on Thursday. Too. Mr. Good said mm -hmm. uh, that it's the school board's responsibility mm -hmm. to do those accident investigations, and he's not involved in it. All he gets are the statistics. So the insurance <coughs> committee, which he's part of reporting to, probably wouldn't have any. I, I was just really thinking more about Ed that. being the leader at Elam and the over risk management. You know, would he, could he drive some of the investigations or, you know, just making sure things are followed up on and that sort of thing? I guess I just kind of like get him to weigh in on it. I mean, because that the, the, the kind of stops, you know. The deal with an accident is not. It's not to put blame, it's, it's not to take corrective action. What it's to do is to figure out, and, and, and every accident fits under one of two different classifications, it's either an unsafe act that causes an accident or an unsafe condition that causes an accident. If it's an unsafe condition, we fix it so that it doesn't happen again. If it's an unsafe act, then you deal with the employee, what did you do to cause that particular accident? and get that person involved in making sure that it doesn't happen again. And it could be as simple as, I fell off of a ladder when I was fixing my classroom, and what are you gonna do? I'm gonna call the custodian to do it for me. I'm not gonna do it. And it's something as simple as that, but but if, if we don't take corrective action, then it could happen again next month or next year. So that's the whole process about, about accident investigations. It's just a, try to prevent them from happening again. And if we're not doing that, shame on us, we ought to be doing it, okay? The board is meeting tonight uh, to discuss their strategic plan, is that correct? Yes, sir. Will they approve that tonight, or will that go to another board meeting? I don't recall. This was a draft, <coughs> excuse me, this was the draft they were reviewing okay. um, tonight, and I would assume that it'll be on the agenda on the Next is that meeting. something that's sent directly to this committee uh, once it's passed? In the past, has this committee received it uh, expeditiously? No, we t we typically only see the five-year building plan. I, I would I would like to see the strategic plan as well, whatever is appropriate, whatever is approved. Yes, I definitely, because it's 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 good. The draft was good, okay. including my part. <laughs> okay. He humbly says. Yeah. I think that's a reasonable request. If we're going to spend 75% of the money right. um, in 
education, funding education, then we need to know what we're funding. Right. And the strategic plan is a big part of what we're funding, uh, where the school board wants to go. And it's not our job, it's their job to, I say it, to formulate, that's what the school board's for, it's their job to formulate. It's not our job to uh, necessarily criticize or try to redraft or change or anything. But it's our job to understand. That's right. Uh, I can't understand what we're funding unless we have that document. So I think it's a reasonable request. And like I said, it's not to try to, form, okay, we're going to help you formulate this, or we're going to try to impose this, or we're going to try to impose that. No, it's to help us understand what we're, we're funding and everything. So that's the way, and that's the way a good partnership works, right. I think. A real good partnership works with full dialogue backwards and forth and that's what we've pretty much had yes. in recent years since I've been here and that's what we want to continue to do. Yes. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mr. Spurlock wants to talk a little bit more about that accident investigation thing. Does that mean call? Yes sir. Well it wasn't exactly a report but I'd still like to improve the um, information that was shared from Mr. Votery, so entertain a motion. So moved. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Right. Any other business for this committee? Okay. Stand adjourned.